Swear it's been 700 degrees in here since you came in. Hi, it's Jack Rogers. Welcome back. We're talking about virtual servers and VMware. I just wanted to give you a scope of what VMware is all about and why we use it or why these companies use it. Or if you're running uh, five physical servers, why would you want to use it? Now, let's, let's give you a sort of an overview. Say you have five servers like these, all, all in your um, computer room or server room or data center, or five rack servers, for instance. If you've got a nice, powerful, reasonable, powerful server, you load VMware onto it, you can consolidate all those five servers on one bit of hardware. That's what VMware does. It allows you to run virtual servers, which are, in theory, what your physical servers was. You can take that, put it into a virtual server, and it runs the same as it would be on hardware. The only difference is, is you're saving yourself from hardware costs, you're saving yourself on power costs, and you're saving yourself on a lot of maintenance time for each servers. And obviously, the servers come with these warranties, these extended warranties. It'd be a fortune keep spend, sorry, expanding the warranties every year on all five servers. So you've got one decent server um, that's a decent spec. Because with a virtual server, you've got to have uh, at least a lot of hardware. And this company that I've sort of done this video for has very powerful HP servers. And they're all decent enough to actually run VMware really nicely. So for a single server, um, again, depends on the type of RAM and CPU you have inside. Dual core CPUs, eight cores or six cores is ideal. 32 gig of RAM or, or 16 gig of RAM is 16 gram is minimum, 32 gram is okay, 64 is even better, you know, uh, in there. So each virtual server, it acts like a physical server inside, and you can share the RAM between each virtual server. So you've got 32 gig RAMs in there. You could give each virtual server eight dedicated gig of RAM each, and you can then um, neutralize the CPU between all servers. So whatever server is not using so much CPU, ones that are can actually use it and you can load balance it or you can actually say to the CPU I'm going to split you up between each of the, each of the virtual servers giving them dedicated CPU time dedicated um, RAM as well now on the RAID, on the RAID hard drive RAID you'll put RAID 5 in this box then you can create um, this space or lots of this space for each physical server so when you do a server install or when you create a VMware setup you can sign it to like RAM and stuff like that which I'll go over on a on a um, more close-up shot. So I've got VMware running over here at the moment. I can show you what the, the console looks like and how you create a virtual server. So we'll do that later, at a later date. So that way you can take five servers, scrap them or set them on, have one physical server doing the whole job with five servers. So you're saving all, all that power, time, expense, and IT administration time as well that goes into it. It makes it remote, remote manageable. If you have five physical servers, that means you're going to have to have some sort of remote control software on it or a hardware card that allows you to remote control into it, which can cost money. <clears throat> with this, it all comes with the tools. So you can actually, as long as you publish the IP address on your firewall, you can gain access to this box anytime from anywhere in the world. So if your IT administrator goes on holiday, give them a quick call, look, the server's down, got something wrong, they can dial in quickly and have a look at what's going on. <clears throat> if you want to sort out hardware redundancy saying like, once the server hardware fails you know, I've got, then I have no server if any of the hardware fails inside as long as you're taking regular snapshots and backups you 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 can just literally especially with disk failure you can put new disks in there reload the VMware on it and, and drop on the VMware and you're back up and running within a few hours if you don't want any downtime you'll minimise downtime a lot then you have two of these boxes and they're mirroring each other so you can buy the licence you get a free version of VMware bare bones which is free and allows you to run via virtual servers on it but if you buy the licensed version you can do load balancing between which basically mirrors anything on this box on this box so if any hardware fails on the box with memory RAM disk space it will be mirrored across to the second box <clears throat> and the good thing about it because it's load balancing it could be acting like load balancing so if you've got like more than 25 users logging into your network it can load balance users across both servers if you wanted to. So there's lots of options in VMware you can do um, to control it. So you can say, look, using both load balancing boxes, if one fails, everyone moves over to one box, that can then be looked after and sorted back online, no downtime. Um, so there's tons of options on that, but we'll go in more details on that anyway, but there's a solution. So this company's got three really nice bits of kit. 
so we can consolidate them down onto one single server. Once them, once the, the software has been transferred over, we can then build the second server. Then you can set up the third server to get some money back. So what I would do, I would have a, a proper decent scenario would be two of these boxes being mirrored, running off to a NAS box as a as a backup as well. Then you've got a perfect solution in here for your for your network. That's my suggestion. Each server, I would have a farm print server running DHCP and DNS. I would have um, an exchange server, which will be your domain controller. It has to be domain controller to install Exchange on it. And that's all your emails, remote access, emails to your iPhone, iPads. I would also run a dedicated backup uh, database server. So you've got a database, which this company has, then a dedicated da database server for that one. And lastly, but not least, a terminal server, um, virtual server, so you can actually take ha deliver remote desktops to your end users, which basically means they could work from anywhere. They don't have to be in the office to work. They can work everywhere. I always work from remote desktop. So if I'm out and about, uh, I run a friends. I can log into my desktop. I can sort stuff out and then log out. Then that way I'm not tied to a PC. And then it basically means if you've got 25 users in a company. They'll all become standard Windows 10 PCs. And then anybody could log on to any machine anytime. So you can have like hot desking going on and stuff as well. So that opens that up. Again, it's all part of the terminal server, so it's not massive amounts of cost you have to pay out for. Most of it you've got there already. It's just about neutralizing it, consolidating it, and put it into a you know decent solution. Um it saves a lot of time, saves a lot of hardware. And also, because you're losing these um servers, a lot of space back into your server room. And less cables, <laughs> I must say, less cables to use. Those um, servers you got there, they've got four network cards running off the back, so you can then have a decent um, network backbone speed as well. So if you're running two servers, four network cards teamed up as one network card, you've got a four gig um, network, and you'll find copying data between them be so much faster. And that's my recommendation. So I hope this is helpful. If it is, please comment below and let me know. Cheers. Thank you.